So, hi, welcome to TechCrunch Disrupt SF 2014. I am John Schieber, this is Bill Hembrecht. We just got off stage with uh, a video conference with Clay Christensen talking about some of the ways in which disruption is occurring and has occurred. And Bill, I'd love to get your thoughts on how you're applying sort of this thesis or theory of disruption to your own investment model. Well, first of all, we apply it as investment managers. And in particular, uh, we have run our venture funds for the last 11 years exclusively on what we thought was Clay's disruption theory. And it's worked very well. Uh, How large is the fund? Oh, it's small. It's, most, it's essentially our money. It started out at $8 million. It's, now it's, you know, it's valued at about $40 million. And, Well, congratulations. That's and, always nice. And, and we have three uh, investments moving towards public markets, Tango, Yipay, we have, we have some real winners. Well, so, so it's interesting, you, you talk about sort of quantifying disruption. How exactly do y'all approach that process? What are the metrics you use to sort of find the, the numbers behind a sort of nebulous concept like disruption? Well, you know, it's, it's, there is a very complex statistical answer to that, and I'd have to get you our people to do it. <laughs> But when I first started trying to apply it, the numbers that I used was, I, I would say something has to deliver at least 80% of what the market wants for 20% or less of the cost. I thought that was the kind of differential you want right. that makes it impossible for the incumbent to adjust. Right. And, and as Clay says, their typical response then is to move up market and you have the opportunity to right. develop the market from underneath them. Right. Uh, we have, in, our, in the work that we've done over the years, uh, uh, Thomas Christensen, who's uh, uh, Thomas, sorry, Thomas Thurston, <laughs> who was a Christensen fellow, right. and, and, and has been our, our uh, partner who has really worked on this, he's basically worked out ways of finding quantifiable uh, type indices that, that tie to the qualitative. Right. But he's gone beyond that now. He's, right. he's now uh, done what the world is now starting to call big data, right. where we've tried to identify trends right, right, right. that would help us in the timing of disruption. Right. You know, it's, it's one thing to say this is disruptive. Sometimes they take 15 years. Right. Well, so you, interestingly, you mentioned Tango, and I know that they just raised uh, fairly large round, significant amount of money from Alibaba. Right. Do you see the, and, and I don't want to misappropriate uh, uh, Clay's term because we've, we've all known where that, can, we <laughs> have already acknowledged where that can go, but do you see these players as being disruptive in the industry where they're providing something which is 80% of a service for 20% of the cost or really changing the cost dynamic of, of doing business for, for certain industries? Well, yes, I think, you know, the, the, the Tango started as really what we thought was a disruption of Skype. And mobile was the, uh, the technology that allowed them to do it. Right. Uh, in reality, like so many of these others, it's developed into something much broader because it's very, the, the management team is very bright. They're very international. They have a large, they have a significant amount of their development group right. in China. And, and so they, they've learned a lot and are now what the world is starting to call a direct messaging company. Right. Which I think is disrupting social networks. Well, it's a different platform, right? Yeah. And it's, a, it's sort of a broader platform for, for doing other types of business. You can layer e-commerce on top of it in a way that Facebook was never able to do. That's right. I mean, basically, Tango now has a, a, a games platform, a music platform. A, you know, and, and they, they are allowed, they can do that, right. and they can allow you to tailor make your audience. Right. In other words, you no longer have to worry about putting something out that goes to the whole world. But, it, I mean, it's an interesting point about Tango, but I, I'd like to sort of return to the, uh, the, the this sort of Chinese company notion. I, I harbor on the point, I harp on the point a lot because I spent a lot of time there. I know a few of those guys a little bit. Right. Do, do you see disruptive innovation coming from China, or is it a matter of sort of incremental, uh, a, a sort of a, a refinement of a business model that has already existed in the States? Well, I think a lot of it has been, uh, they've seen what's happened in the States, right. and they have applied it in, in China and Asia, 
and and it has been easier in a lot of ways because they haven't had to deal with an incumbent. Right. You know, they they could they could create something new. They right. didn't have a lot of copper out right, there, right. so they could go mobile. Right. Uh, but I think it's a real mistake to underestimate the uh, the talent and the drive and the innovative capability of those companies. And with that, sir, I thank you very much for the time. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.